In this video, we're going to learn about the quotient rule. The quotient rule states that if you have the square root of a fraction, or in this case, the square root of a over b, you can rewrite that as the square root of a, all divided by the square root of b, and vice versa. It may be helpful to reduce the fraction first and the radical second. Let's try this in example one. Since we have matching indexes in the numerator and the denominator, let's go ahead and rewrite this as one whole fraction under one radical sign. 48 and 150 have a common factor of six. So let's go ahead and reduce that fraction. 48 divided by six is eight. And 150 divided by six is 25. Now that I've reduced the fraction, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite it as a square root of eight over 25. I know that eight is a perfect cube of two, and 25 is a perfect square of five. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite it with its prime factors, and I'm gonna split it up into two separate fractions. Excuse me, two separate radicals. So I'll have two to the third, and that's the square root of two to the third over the square root of five to the second. At this point, I remember that I take the exponent, divide it by my index, which as you all know is two, and I get two with a remainder of one. In the denominator, the same thing occurs. I have an index of two and an exponent of two. When I divide the exponent by the index, I get one. So I can pull five to the first power out and a remainder of five to the zero. The square root of one is just one. Five times one is five, and so we don't have to write this part. So this is the most simplified expression that you can have by starting out with the square root of 48 over the square root of 150. Notice that the twos, the two and the five do not reduce, so this is as simplified as it can be. In example two, we do a similar process. If I reduce the common factor of five out of the numerator and the denominator. 225 is divisible by five and we get 45. 20 is divisible by five and we get four. If we think of our x's as multiplication, I have seven x's in the numerator and three x's in the denominator. Three of those x's will divide out in both the numerator and the denominator, and I'll be left with x to the fourth in the numerator. So now I can rewrite this whole radical as 45, x to the fourth over four. Let's go ahead and find the prime factors of 45. 45 divided by five is nine. Nine divided by three is three. Three divided by three is one. So here are my prime factors. So 45 can be rewritten as three to the second times five. 
Let's go ahead and rewrite it now. We have the square root of 3 to the second times 5 over the square root of 4. 4, as we know, is a perfect square of 2. So 4 could be written as 2 to the second. Let's not forget the x to the fourth there in the numerator. Okay, now that we know all the prime factors and they're listed underneath the radical signs, we can now simplify the radicals further. Let's go ahead and do that now. 3 to the second divided by 2 would give me 1 with a remainder of 0. So I can pull out a 3. If I divide the exponent by the index of 2 on the x to the fourth, I get 2 remainder 0. So x to the second can come out and I'm left with nothing inside of my radical. When I have nothing left inside of my radical, except for 5. Notice that this has an exponent, this has an exponent, but 5 is prime, so we leave that inside the radical. In the denominator, we have an exponent of 2 and an index of 2. When we divide them, we get 1 with a remainder of 0. So 1, 2 will come out. Since there's a remainder of 0, there's nothing left in the radical, so we don't write it. If we look at 3x squared and compare it to the denominator of 2, there are no common factors. So this expression has been reduced to its lowest terms.